How's it going, everybody? It's Josh, K-I-6-N-A-Z, and I got a chance to borrow this, the Soda Beams 3-band linked dipole, something that you, as the name implies, may want to use on a soda or portable operation expedition where you're probably going to use QRP. I've got a lot to say about this, and uh, let's go talk about it right now. Right up top, I want to give a big thank you to Matt AE4MQ for letting me borrow this. He came on the soda trip we did last month, and he left the antenna with me and said, hey, do a review on it and tell us what you think about it. I'll tell you right up front, I really like this thing. Um, yeah, so thanks, Matt. I'm probably going to buy one of these myself and send you back this one or maybe just have them shipped directly to you in a from the UK so I don't really have to bother and just keep this one if that's all right. And as always, if you find this content helpful or interesting, think about giving me a thumbs up. It helps out the YouTube algorithm and the more thumbs up basically puts this type of content in front of people who may not know about amateur radio and the Ham Radio Crash Course is kind of there for them, help them get started and answer some questions or explain some of the details like this dipole system. So the Bandhopper 3, basically 3 meaning 3 band dipole, is a linked dipole system that covers 10, 30, and 40 meters. And when you're in 40 meters, you can also operate on 15 by using the automatic antenna tuner on your radio if you have that capability. It weighs about 18 grams. It's extremely lightweight and packable and will work off of just about any fiberglass fishing pole like the ones we often use when we run QRP out in the field. Soda Beams also produces their own uh, fishing pole type mast that you can get and it's available on their website. The link will be in the description. A couple of points of note, basically how this system works is it's an all-inclusive winding and setup system. There is a center connector, basically a center connector, that has your one-to-one -one ballon, and there's a hole in the middle of that mounting plate that you put the pole directly through. So you don't need to necessarily have a zip tie tying to the center connector and then putting a load on the mass, which happens a lot with the speaker wire dipole when you use like a fishing loop uh, eye. So I found that right out of the bat, installing and setting up this antenna was extremely intuitive and very easy. I just elongated the mast, slid the center connector through the hole in the middle, and then dragged the lines out for the wires and the uh, mounting cordage. And then there's a third leg, which is the actual cordage you use to stabilize the dipole. Very nicely done. All three sides or legs of this antenna two are active and one is a stabilizer, have their own winders attached to it. And the winders are permanently connected and knotted, and then everything's kind of cut and linked exactly to the space you want to, and then you just take the tent stakes that are provided, stake the holes into the ground, and then lift the antenna up. The only thing I found that was fidgety about the whole thing really is what you learn in the first 10 minutes of using it, is how far to space the active legs of the antenna. It was actually pretty straightforward getting set up. I've never done it before. I had to put it up twice, basically, once I got the lines taut. And then once it's taut, it seems to be up pretty okay. Um, hopefully we don't get a wind, or maybe we should see how it holds up in the wind. You lay the whole thing down, you spread the legs out, and then you kind of have to walk them back in before you kind of lift the pull up. And then after lifting the pull up, you take that third leg and, and kind of guy it out until it's nicely spaced. You don't need secondary guy lines. You don't need to do anything like that. It's all handled via the legs of the antenna and the stabilizing line. These are all things that have already existed in the speaker wire dipole world, if you will. But the application of what Soda Beams has done is extremely well done. Very high quality, extremely lightweight. Now, um, I want to make a point here. This is not a doublet like you would see if you were doing the speaker wire dipole. This is not a balanced line feed line down from that center connector. There's actually a one-to-one -one ballon and coax that comes out, and the end coax is B and C. Wonderful for QRP or for portable radios. They know their market. They know what they're targeting. So it makes setup of the whole thing extremely, extremely easy. I, I, I have to say... After using this and, and understanding that 
by that center connector having a hole through it, you can basically get your mast perfectly vertical and then using those three legs get it positioned perfectly. I'm a big, uh, I'm a convert to the whole system. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed setting it up and using it. Now, the if you are working alone, I will mention this, if you are working alone, you will need to kind of bring the antenna down, unlink or relink if you want to change bands and then get it back up. So if you are a band hopper, as the name implies, you may have to kind of bring the antenna down and then put it back up. Now, I want to uh, I want to explain a little bit deeper about that. You can't just like lower the mast and then run over to each leg, unlink or link and then run back and raise it up because you've lost all the tension that's holding the three legs and, and making that mast centrally stabilized and it will fall over on you. So what I found to do, which was kind of the easiest thing to do is just, you know, kind of take the mast and, and drop it down to one side and run over and link it. Or if you're with a second person, have them hold the mast while you go do it. Ben, my son, helped me out doing that a couple of times. We were able to work 40 meters and 20 meters at a park today. We worked single sideband. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the signal yes, report. You're a 5.9 as well. I'm in Cerritos, California, running QRP, 7 watts on a wire dipole. A watch a dipole. Yeah, KI6NAZ. Uh, QSL, QSL, do you copy? This is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Am I still making it? Am I still making it? Can you hear me okay? Thanks for the, uh, uh, for the contact. Uh, the, maybe the propagation changed. Pennsylvania. Okay, so I <laughs> I made a quick contact. This guy's in Washington, D.C. And I brought my uh, portable FT8 system out, which I've had a lot of fun of. There will be a video on that very soon. And uh, we were able to work FT8 <laughs> from the park. You know, why, why, why do FT8 from home when you can do FT8 in a park, right? Yeah, because you can, right? That's why we do it. So what do I like about the soda beams? Well, I've already covered most of it, right? It is a very easy to deploy, lightweight at about 18 grams dipole system that operates on three bands and are resonant on each one of those bands. I did not have to uh, use my tuner. I did not have to trim the dipoles. It worked on 20. I tuned it on 30 just to see, although I didn't operate from there. And it was perfectly, you know, one to one or just about one to one on 40. And I didn't try 15, I forgot to do it with the ATU, but I assume that works as well. So lightweight, resonant dipoles right out of the bag and that bag, whew, special notes on that bag. The bag has a seam that runs through a portion of the bag where the tent stakes slide into. Extremely well designed, literally, they thought of everything like I, I i can guess that these are people who've done a lot of soda activations this is in the uk soda comes from the uk and they know the things that they struggled with and worked with and modified and changed and i think this is the byproduct of that this is the the child of many of the head banging against the wall situations that they found themselves in and it's really really good for that purpose uh, the bag that comes with is well made Again, the 10 stakes, they're fine. You can swap them out if they go bad on you. They're an aluminum type. They're kind of cheap, but, you know, whatever. Uh, the other thing I like, that center connector. I just have to restate. That center connector with the hole is, a, a, who knows? It's a crazy revelation. It's something so simple. But to get your mass perfectly stabilized like that, you don't have that droopy mass thing where you're kind of like trying to guy it out like you would with a speaker wire dipole normally. It's so smart. And I'm sure people are already doing this. I have not went to that system yet but i'm gonna buy one of these so that i won't have to because again this makes it really simple they use alligator clips to connect the bands uh, in the link dipole system and they have little plastic pieces that run in between there to keep the tension and so you're never really applying any tension or force to the connectors it's only on that plastic strip which has a couple of loops of the wire like I said, no, nothing was uh, not covered with this thing. The winders are perfectly built. Uh, I love the winders. Uh, the whole thing is just really nicely done. So what do I not like about it? Well, there's not a lot. I hate to say, uh, boy, 
you, know, you get this standard review system and I've got nothing bad to say about these products. And actually, I, I kind of like it when I can just review something that is just really, really good and I can mention it to you because it makes me happy that I can just say, hey, no, you should check this out. It's really good. There's not a lot not to like about this. It, I, it'll handle about 100 watts uh, single sideband. At least that's what it says on the Bandhopper 3. That was not on Bandhopper 2's website or uh, 2 or 3's page for it. So I don't know if the same is true. I assume they're the same material. So it's probably 100 watts of single sideband and less for CW, call it 50 or, or less, but I'll send them a message and find out and post it in the description. Or maybe if I haven't done editing this, uh, they'll just reply to it and then I can answer, I can just append this and do it live. Like I could go like this. Okay, so there you go. There's the right answer to that. Um, so would I buy this? Yes, I'm gonna go buy one. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for letting me borrow this or I guess, you know, Damn you, because uh, now I gotta go drop 100 pounds and deal with shipping from the UK to 100 pounds, geez, $100 and figure out how shipping works from the UK to you or myself, however we make this work. But it is a really good antenna. It was a lot of fun to set up. I, and I, um, the, the winders are still, all these things that are in this make the soda activation and the soda setup and the soda teardown really, really simple kudos to soda beans on this one uh, this is a this is a winner now I will mention this because they put this on their website and I, and I think that um, there are the people that may be watching this that like to activate CW and they're using a mountain topper they said perfect match for your LNR mountain topper radio which uh, I didn't think about that I'm not a mountain topper user I have a kx2 but yeah that's that's perfect that's great because you don't have to worry about a tuner then you just have this right your mast your MTR You've got a real lightweight system with that, and you're up in the air and you're running. Really nicely done. You know, I've got to say, big kudos on that. So if you found this helpful or interesting, again, give me that thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm to get these type of videos in front of other people that may... Uh, oh, my screen just went dead. That freaked me out a little. Uh, may not be hams or, or may become hams, and hopefully this can shed some light on some things and, and maybe help them out. If you have not already, please subscribe. I do live stream every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where I try and cover different topics in amateur radio to expose new people to new aspects of the hobby or to bring new people into the hobby. Anyway, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. can't even set up in a park without uh, having somebody come over and say hi. That was Jim. Nice guy. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah.